Hi everyone, welcome to Music Business Today where we bring you the latest news in the music world. We absolutely do, Hannah, and today we're talking about fish and a little scare with the weather, um, which there's mm. been a few of lately. We're also going to talk about Dirk Bentley on the Rolling Stones cover, which is a really interesting story, yeah. and uh, some shake-ups in the music industry, which is nothing new, but we'll go back. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bandwidth for today's show is brought to you by SoftLayer.com. We love SoftLayer here at Talkopolis. They are the greatest hosting company ever. They make everything easy. Check out their website at SoftLayer.com. Thanks again for sponsoring the show. Welcome back to Music Business Today. I am Hannah Renee. And I'm Kane Harrison. And we are going to kick off with a bit of a scare for Fish, um, who the, the band were playing in Chicago recently. And they had to p p p p p postpone <laughs> their concert for some time, which uh, a lot of bands have had to do lately yeah. due to weather scares. Well, they evacuated. Oh, right. They, they evacuated. didn't just postpone it. Um, it was Pearl Jam that had a three-hour delay. That's right. That's, that's exactly um, right. But they actually evacuated the fish show. I mean, this has happened a lot, and I think that now, yeah. because uh, we've talked about it a little bit too, because I think way back, like last year mm -hmm. sometime, um, where there was a country music festival in Canada where some people died, unfortunately, because yeah, of stage that. collapses and mm -hmm. things like that. More recently, um, a couple of months ago, there was the same thing where the stage collapsed a little bit, and so... Yeah. Well, so I think people are starting to try to be a lot more cautious about when yeah. there's inclement weather, you know, headed that direction, just taking those safety precautions and being proactive. Absolutely. And I think this time of year with that strip up the center of the country where it just seems to roll on through. Yeah, so it's just um, been insane weather. It is. But needless to say, they, it, um, especially the Pearl Jam one, they loved mm -hmm. the wait and they waited for three hours, I think, and then yep. Pearl Jam came on stage and probably absolutely nailed it, as we all know they do. Of course. Yeah. Um, well, also, Dirk Bentley, I'm sure everyone has heard about the Rolling Stone cover mm -hmm. that features the alleged terrorists from the Boston bombings um, on the cover. And Dirk Bentley has actually, you know, stepped in and kind of voiced his opinion. He posted a picture of him, you know, carrying the magazine, like, tucked mm -hmm. into his arm so you can't see the picture on it um, on his Twitter account. Um, and basically he was saying, you know, you can exercise your First Amendment. That's totally fine, free speech, but I'm going to exercise my right to not spend seven bucks on your magazine. Um, 100%. But then that erases the question of, okay, so how did you get said magazine that's in your head? <laughs> um, I just thought that was kind of funny. Oh, it is. Ironic, I think that but... the other really valid statement that he makes, I think, which made yeah. him more than the $7 and stuff like that, was that, you know, so many people, the Rolling Stone cover, to get that is, they you know. They strive for that. Like, it, that's oh, absolutely. a that's benchmark like, in your that's career. That's usually better than any award that you can get or anything like that because Rolling Stone, yeah. the, the cover of that, is held in such, such high pristine. And then for them to just, it seems that they've tainted it a little bit, in his opinion, by celebrating violence yeah. which seems to be um a hot topic in pop culture at the moment in that you know i mean i mean back in the day with movies like natural born killers one of my favorite but that's what that movie with the whole thing was about is just this celebration of of violence i mean um, i guess that's true i've kind of been really into a particular show lately that i guess in a sense kind of glorifies it. It definitely glorifies it. I think, but I think that, you know, and it's the same, you get a choice to go and buy this magazine. Yeah. And that's what Dirk Bentley was saying, that, you know, he was probably posting on Twitter yeah. to say, let's not perhaps buy this particular copy. But it does yeah. take the shine off what that magazine stands for, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do kind of like the fact that he did acknowledge like, hey, you know, totally cool. You yeah. want to do that? That is your first amendment. Mm -hmm. By all means do it. But I'm going to exercise, yeah. you know, my own. Yeah, I mean, I haven't read the story, I, so I just know, you know, that um, his face is on the cover, I guess, but yeah. the story could be completely different, so I, I don't know enough about it. Yeah, I haven't actually read the issue, it, I've just been hearing yeah, Just quite a every bit time we think of magazine cover, we think of celebrity, and I think when we put someone like that on there, they automatically go into this realm of celebrity that perhaps shouldn't yeah. be in for the right reasons, so... Um, Music manager Ed Nash, who is a local guy here in Nashville, yeah. um, mm -hmm. he has came out and just said, look, that obviously everyone knows that the music industry is changing, but we need to get off our bums and get, get amongst it. And really, yeah, it's, because we've known about it for such a long time, you know, yeah. iTunes and all these different things have been out for so long that instead of whinging and bitching about it, essentially, it's like, well, you know, let's get ahead of this game. Mm -hmm. And then the, the problem is that the music industry should have come up with things like Spotify and the likes. Yeah, it wasn't even the music industry exactly that did right. that and he's and like guys, guys like kinda... we could have done this why Absolutely. didn't we do this mm -hmm. 
Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that what you'll find is moving forward, obviously, it's always been that social media has been such a valued part, mm -hmm. but I think that more and more tech people will start working in these industries where, you know, it's not unlike film with distribution and things yeah. like that. I mean, because people, you look at Netflix that has just picked up, you know, awards for the first time. Um, They've got some great series on there. Yeah, which a lot of people wouldn't yeah. be aware of, but we just consume and watch you know, our, our media in such a different way. So mm -hmm. Ed is completely right. I think that um, it's about time someone was a little more outspoken, especially yeah. in Nashville, locally. Yeah, it's like don't sit and just keep complaining about, nope. you know, sales and records. Mm -hmm. Like CDs are never going to sell the way they did. No. And it's you know, everyone's and job. It's not, I mean, at the end, the end guy in the artist, I mean, yeah. they need to be more and more aware and more savvy too. I mean, you can go and sign yeah. deals and all that sort of stuff, but you need yeah, to know well, how to market yourself. In and today's how to do music these industry, things. it calls you to be more connected with your fan base. 100%. It's no longer just about, like, well, I have a fan club and I go on stage and sing for them. You yeah. know, it's like offer them things like intimate concerts if they buy this level mm -hmm. package, you know, kind of thing. Like, you know, he has some great ideas as to what people can be doing to really help with, you know, their music. I think the really marketing. interesting thing about the shift is that you, you're so right in a lot of the things that mm -hmm. you're talking about through Kickstarters and the other programs yeah. where you can get online and, and invite people from all over the world to watch you, which you could never, ever do before. So I think the indie level um, ability to... to make a profit out of what they're doing mm -hmm. is rising and but I think from the top layer because of that also they're, they're sort of trying to work out different yeah. ways to do it and the main focus seems to be on that top tier of people who are making enough money anyway let's be honest so yeah, I think I mean, it's opening a lot of different doors. I don't think they're doors. hurting for anything. Yeah but it's always the way now it will be perhaps not the most talented people yeah. but uh, the smartest people that is, the, cream the people that the know how to market themselves, the people that Absolutely. are aware of music as a business as well as... And I can tell you the people who music. are aware of music as a business is mm -hmm. um, recently in Japan, um, SoftBank had a bid for Universal Music. And yeah. I can tell you a little bit about this because I'm sort of involved with some of that stuff at the mm -hmm. moment through China. And what we're what people are trying to do or have come to the realisation is that you can buy blanket licensing of music. Mm -hmm. And so... A lot of the consumers out there, and you guys at home might know this, but just because I write a song, say for instance, if I sit under the, the umbrella of a Universal Music, then Universal Music owns certain copyrights and masters and things that go with that, yeah. that can then let anyone in the world sing or use that stuff. So there's a couple of branches in Japan that are looking at buying out these major companies so they then get all those copyrights. Mm -hmm. If they have those copyrights, they can then go and use that content specific to things like mobile phones and all that other things that at the moment yeah. we can't cash in on, especially they're not cashing in on over there with the Asian market. So it's a really, really interesting time, but I can tell you how much this is worth. They, they bidded to Universal um, $8.5 billion yeah. and it was knocked not back. Not so, a bit of pocket change to say it's the not, least. But I can tell you that this will definitely not be the end of this because the way they're looking to for the end consumer to yeah. purchase music is really for you to get it for free. What you're doing is you'll go to a mobile phone company, say here I'm with Verizon, so I will pay mm -hmm. a premium at Verizon but I'll have access to all this other stuff. Yeah. So it makes exactly. Verizon set apart from an AT&T who may not have blanket licensing say to Justin Bieber or to Rihanna but, That's true, yeah. but you know, but a Verizon, uh, a Verizon may have. So I'll be more likely to go and purchase that phone, and it will just be built into the cost. Um, so you mm -hmm. can see this. You will hear a lot more about this game that will be played, and it will extensively come from oh, the Asian yeah, there's market. There's so much going on with all of that. I mean, it's uh, from a, lot of a worldwide happening. perspective. I think there's like well, there's 23 million people in Australia, which is some small change. There's <laughs> 330 million people in America, and it yeah. seems that at the moment so much talk is about the self-consumption of America. But there's 1.3 billion people in China. So you talk about wanting to get, you know, even five cents a download or something like that off 1.3 billion people. That's insane. Um, so you can see why these yeah. Asian markets are trying to cash in. The big difference is the Western world owns all the music, the Western world has all the stars, these guys have yeah. all the population and the technology, so it's got to meet And somewhere. the marketing knowledge. Like, well, yeah. They definitely I mean, have a business kind of Well, mindset. they've already got an established 
um, clientele. That's the yeah. big thing. So mm -hmm. um, you may have, you know, 20 million people that are serviced by Verizon, but over there you may have, you know, a billion people or something like yeah. that. So by a it's, sister company. It's yeah, it's a really interesting uh, way that we're moving forward. But yeah. Well, last but not least. Uh, there's been some issues with some shows on Broadway right now. Well, one show that was previously on Broadway and another show that is about to open on Broadway. Both of them are Beatles tribute shows. The first one was Rain. This next one is called Let It Be, a West End jukebox musical. Um, why are you laughing? Oh, he's being awful to me. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so they... There's been some controversy going on with that, with the uh, creators of Rain saying that uh, "Let It Be" a Western musical has stolen, you know, basically their it's show. It's crazy. And so they, you know, have taken them to court over it, and they're not necessarily asking them to shut down the show. What they actually want is just half of the revenue of profit from the show. It'll be interesting to see how this worked out. We were talking about this off camera before. Yeah. I mean, and as we say, the Beatles were only around for a small period of time. Mm -hmm. Every one of their songs was is classed as a hit. And it goes on to say that the Rain score has 31 of the Beatles' greatest <laughs> hits, such as Yesterday, Hey Jude, and 28 mm -hmm. of these appear in Let It Be. I mean, no joke. Like, yeah, and if, then they were saying that they copied almost directly different like sets and costumes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, well, you're... Basing these characters like they are the Beatles, so you're clearly using the same historical research and stuff to create your show. Of course, yeah. things are going to line up. I don't think someone went in there with a camcorder, you know, taped the Rain show and then said, okay, done, I'm going to make this other musical for West End. No, that's exactly right. And I yeah. think, the, as I think as we touched on, but um, because the producers of both these um, productions had worked mm -hmm. together before, they kind of think that maybe they stole these different ideas. But, I mean, it's, it's a tricky one because yeah. if you're going to essentially mimic someone, then you want to do it to the best of your ability. And, I mean... Yeah. Well, and Rain is also looking to open up on West End. Yeah. So it's like, okay, like, let's just share. <laughs> There's enough to go around. <laughs> Let it be. Let it be. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Kane, how can we be found? We can be found all over the internet, um, especially on Facebook, which is probably where you're watching us right now. Mm -hmm. And we thank you so much for doing it. But it also means that through Facebook, you can communicate with us by sending us a message, yep. jumping on uh, the Music Business Today page, liking it, and sharing some information, whatever you like. Um, also, we have an awesome Talkopolis app that you can get on your smartphones. Yes. So we're kind of all over the place, which we're happy about. That's easy to find us. It is. Well, that's all we've got time for, guys. So thank you so much for coming past, and we'll see you next time. Talkopolis, the social media TV network for your city.